Hello, hello. Guess what time it is? It's Saturday. Time to get a little lippy, a little mouthy. Talk some stories, have some fun. Maybe make a little fun of some younger folk, make a little fun of some old folk. And as always, we discuss the good times we had as kids and why we love the younger laughs so much. So how the hell is everybody on Saturday night? It's that time again. 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Do your children know where you are? Does it matter anymore? Uh, greetings. How is everybody on Saturday? I'm enjoying myself. It's another night. I was wondering who would come by, who would not. Who would still be distracted by an NBA game if one was going on. Oh. Being sick is never fun. Same with running a 12-hour road trip. Damn. Road trips, I love road trips and I can drive for hours, but a 12 hour there and back. Then again, I used to run four hours to, to just go drive for coffee for a couple hours and head back. I love travel. I love driving. It's a joyous time because you're alone in the vehicle with nobody to pester you. Well, Pike, I hope you're feeling better tomorrow or even later. Being sick is never fun. I don't like it. I haven't really been sick myself in a long time, but I don't know how, but I pulled a muscle in my shoulder today while washing my hair in the shower, of all things. I guess that means that this age thing and out of shape thing is starting to creep up. You know, that's, that's how it happens. That's how it goes. Can't, can't overdo it all the time. You got to watch yourself. Got to be careful. Because we just don't seem to heal like we once did. <laughs> oh, waking up when you're sore is not a good thing. I had a friend woke up with a broken leg once. Doesn't know how he did it. He's convinced that one of us went in the room and whacked him with a bat when he was sleeping, but it didn't happen. But yeah, oh, pulling muscles in your sleep, no problem. I quite often wake up with a kink in my neck. It's horrible. You know, woke up the odd time with a bloody nose for some god-awful reason. Never ever got him as a kid, but I get him now. Periodically. A child, she gets him pretty easy and fairly often. Not a lot you can do about them. They are nuts. I'm sitting there. Last week talked about how there isn't any much good TV or no more really good new movies or new ones when they do them. And I, I had to do it. You know, when they, they dropped that Fallout season one, I had to watch it. I played the games. I admit it. I like the games. So I had to watch the show. I actually enjoyed it. It's way, way better than I thought it was going to be. That is for damn sure. And then I turned around afterwards and tortured myself by watching that god-awful part two of Rebel Moon. They have to take away Zack Snyder's movie-making privileges. That is an absolute must. He can't write. He's just not doing it for me no more. I'm not a basketball guy, but I know many, many people seem they're, they're up and in for the playoffs, huh? Enjoying it. Making some side bets, maybe. See who can win a couple bucks. Try and figure it out. What I think you should really do is you lay some odds on it for next year. And I'll put odds that it won't even happen. 
be no NBA Finals next year. I'll put 10 bucks down on it now. They'll probably give me 1,000 to 1 odds. If I win, oh, we're all in trouble. <laughs> if I win, they probably wouldn't have a way to pay. That's just my reference to how everything got shittier as another week went by. Can't do it. Can't believe it. Oh. Oh, yeah. I remember. Comic books one time made for people to actually enjoy. They made them for the customers, the ones that spent the money. And welcome there, Mocha. Haha. <laughs> oh, it's going. How's it going? It's going just cheeky. Enjoying the day. Another Saturday. I survived another week. Enjoying myself. Getting ready. Going to have to take off and go do that one build coming up that's going to be too much for one guy, but oh, I got to do it. I seen that. You mentioned that earlier there, Robert. The long day on the highway. What brought on a 12-hour round-trip road trip just like that? And yes, Pike, Stanley was the man and... I like going back all the time and watching his story about how when he managed to get the actual Spider-Man first issue made. Oh, that'll do it. Kid's birthday. He's getting the last issue made and it sat there and they were going out of business. So they said like, oh, last issue, nobody cares, right? What you want? So he did the Spider-Man and it took off. They actually had to do a second run and saved the company. <laughs> the man was a genius. Absolutely, when it come to comics. 12-hour round trip for the kid's birthday. Did you get to much, spend much time at the other end when you got there? Or you are only there for an hour or two and turned around and headed right on back. That's a long drive. Hello. I've gone 12 hours without stopping, except having to get gas once. One truck it did really, really good on gas. That was awesome. It's nothing like heading out on a nice road trip, passing through the countryside, even if you've driven it a hundred times or a thousand times. You go on through and it's another road trip and it's you always see something. I love the scenery. I can drive for days, hours. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'd gladly drive for a living. Except for the fact that if a guy started driving truck and heading off to places, they don't make anywhere nice to go. Picked up Dark Side on vinyl. Oh. Was that something you were looking for and arranging ahead of time? Or was there a nice little shop out that way that you got to pop into that has vinyl? And you got to pick it up. Because I find sometimes you got you to gotta search around, see who's got it. See who's trading it. and Or maybe there there will be a store. Sometimes they're the second-hand stores. They won't even know what they brought in. They'll just drop a crate somewhere. Really? So I never would have thought of that, but I don't, I don't get out that much. I mean, only places I ever go when I do go out shopping is like Walmart and Costco, unless I'm stopping to get gas, but then... Here's your gas up there, too. Oh, that's that's nice. 
Nothing like a good record store to go hopping through and running through and having a good look at what you can find. Eh? See what's there. More to find. The trick is to keep a good turntable now. You know, I, I don't see when you, you know, you'll get, they'll make uh, duplicates or little portable new ones now that, you know, maybe even the USB connections, so you can connect them into your computer. But and I like the old stack component systems. You know, you would have the old tower there. And you have your amp on one and you'd have your, of course, your record player would be at the top and your, your dual tape deck would be underneath on the other shelf. Then when, of course, the very bottom is where you'd have your favorite records lined up because there'd be the space would be big enough where you'd pull the one shelf out so you could line all your records up on the bottom. And your two great big speakers off in the corner of the living room. Those are the stereo systems I like. I like those. Everybody now, though, wants to pump them through a, some sort of surround system or a Bose system or something. I... I don't know. I like the look and feel of the old stack systems. And you can go buy your individual components. And then having a place to, you know, keeping some extra needles around. I imagine there is some sort of music store nearby where you can go pick up needles for your record player or order them online these days. It's amazing how often I forget that you just... Most of the stuff you go, I can't find it anywhere. If you search, you find it online. You're going to order it from somewhere. They're going to have it somewhere. You're going to be able to pick it up and get it for not much cost at all. I always forget. I always forget about online shopping. I do it sometimes and I don't do it a whole lot because I've accidentally bought stuff on online shopping that I didn't intend to. You know, like I bought an actual restaurant grade quality flat grill by accident because I was just keeping it to look at it. Then I went to buy something else and instead of click now to buy on Amazon, I ended up clicking to buy the whole cart now, which is where I would store things just to look at them. And I ended up buying this big commercial nickel plated grill. Oh, it was crazy. Ha <laughs> Oh, there, there, rubber. That sounds like a nice system. I bet you that just sounds lovely. You get it going, you tune it up. You get everything set the way you like it. Oh, yeah. That That's the way to run it, for sure. If you crank that up all the way, how close is your nearest neighbor? You going to get a complaint? Or do you got cool neighbors that are just going to kick back and listen? I, I always hated that. I, I had neighbors at one time when we were younger, and they one neighbor on one side complained about everything. They wrote down every little thing they ever saw, sound, noise, the works, and would constantly, constantly be calling the police. The other neighbor didn't complain at all. On the other side. And then we had a neighbor across the street that said, oh, they get loud once in a while, but I just shut my door. But I mean, ah, see, there you go. One acre's nice size. You feel like you got this wide open land that's yours and you're not close enough really to bother anybody. And if you got some trees or a hedge, it's like going private paradise when you have yourself an acre. You enjoy that like you wouldn't believe. I'm a firm believer everybody should have an acre to five acres. About three and a half to me, I think, is perfect. I have myself that big-ass garden. Half-acre pond where I'm going to stack some stuff. Hey, aquarium. Welcome here. What's up with you on this Saturday? Gotta love it when everybody makes it in. <laughs> it is another time. It is. I oh. 
I wasn't sure if there was going to be a Saturday this week. It gets stupid every time I turn around and walk outside or turn on the TV or click a radio. <laughs> Not a whole hell of a lot rolling today. It's been an actual kind of a quiet day. You know, been sitting here trying to do some designs and stuff, make me a new logo. You know, work on some things, keep myself occupied. No, that's tea. That is what they call a uh, hibiscus tea. It's it's not bad. I drink very 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 rarely. Now anyway, if it's a barbecue. I'll sit back, have a beer at a barbecue. You know, have a drink with the buddies. But not much. <laughs> Oh, Robert, I can't so much do the tequila anymore. We had, well, we had two summers. That's, that's all any of us drank for the whole time. Yes, I have to watch myself, you know, liver disease and all. And not from drinking. No, no, no. I got what they, I actually got what they call a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I come from the 10 years when I worked in a restaurant and eating greasy ass food three times a day, seven days a week because it was free. So. <laughs> oh, I don't plan on leaving a pretty one. I plan on leaving it when it's time. My corpse is going to be over there and over there and maybe some behind me. You know. I'll probably fall off a 10 story building while we're working on it. You know, slide off the side or some nonsense like that. No way. <laughs> nah. You can't. Because we all know that was, that was James Dean's motto, right? Was it live fast, die young, leave a beautiful corpse is what he said. Which he didn't do. If you ever seen photos of what his car looked like after the accident there was there was no beautiful left in his corpse no way in hell then you had the whole james dean curse at anybody that built a car that had parts from his old porsche spider it was cracking and dying all over the place he couldn't handle it Absolutely not. We're going to go sliding in, kicking and screaming. It's going to be bloody nails, black eyes, fat lips. And there's going to be so many toxins in the body or in the organs that ain't nothing's going to get passed on to anybody else. That is the Gen X way. Nah, man, we, we used to just go hard all the time with the tequila. Just nonstop, that's all we drink. People would always show up at the house and they would just drop a big bottle of tequila on the kitchen table. Then we'd just pop that sucker and out would come the shot glasses. And we would rock it all summer long. It got so bad that pretty soon everything tasted like it. Couldn't, couldn't drink anything else. It didn't even touch the beer or nothing. And then winter would come around. And then for some reason, then we'd switch to beer. <laughs> that very well could be, Robert. We could sit around a long time with all the preservatives they've been putting in our food for. We've been eating it for several generations. Absolutely. They're going to have us tied up and we're going to be walking around forever. But then we should be able to run things forever. <laughs> you know, Scepter, when you mention, when you talk about it like that, our bodies are like a carnival ride. Yeah, but our bodies were like the cheap carnival, you know, the one where you didn't quite, they didn't quite take care of the rides and you're never sure if it was going to break on you or a, a cage was going to fly off in the middle of spinning around or something. You know, that was the type of carnival that you'd compare our bodies to of a carnival ride. We're the car cheap carnival, the ones that nobody actually maintained the rides properly. So they could have malfunctioned at any time. 
<laughs> Twinkies of the generations. That could be. So what are you saying, Robert? If, if something happened now, all that would be left would be Gen X, Twinkies, and cockroaches? I mean, we almost did lose the Twinkie a couple years ago. All because one company goes under and they didn't want to sell off just the Twinkie. But it could be you know, mummified ourselves from the inside. Absolutely. <laughs> it very well could be that way. You know, you never do know. I know they, they kept saying, you know, we're, we're expected ourselves to live to be like 110, 115, 120 is not supposed to be that big of a deal. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't see it. I don't see myself making to 120. If so, that means another 70 years. What am I going to do for another 70 years? I mean, I can't sit on the front porch and shoot at people when they go down the road. You know, I hear that, Robert. I never actually expected to live past, you know, I figured I'd be gone somewhere between 21 and 25 if I was lucky. That was going to be an old man. That's, that's where I was heading. You know, I figured that I was going to be you know, 21 to 25 was going to be old. I would have run my course, ended it already, finished up, and had nothing left. I'd have been wore out, broken, beaten, and gone. Oh, yeah, everything, even deep fried ice cream. I mean, come on now. Who didn't like that deep fried ice cream? I didn't really like it, but I ate it. It just really wasn't my thing. Well, that's because Crisco was for everything, especially if you were going to do like fried chicken and a nice cast iron skillet. You know, yeah, you, you had to, you had to get that. I mean, you actually cooked with lard, you know, real lard. You know, things when they actually used real animal products and then they started making all the artificial stuff. You know, it absolutely was. It was like having, you know, if there were four things that you always had to go get at the store to make sure you have, it was bread, milk, eggs, and lard. Always. We did when I was, when I was little though, we had tons of vegetables because we had a massive garden out there. Like we had the farm and the ranch and we had massive, huge garden. You know, we didn't do things like other people, like when we would harvest the vegetables and you would pull the, the, the beans and peas and, 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 and the cucumbers and all that stuff. And we would spend, everybody would come in the family, all the aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody would come. And we would harvest all the vegetables from this giant ass garden and we'd be canning stuff for like a week. We, we had preserves that would last forever. We had stuff in the basement of my grandparents' place from 10 years earlier because we had so much stuff and we gave tons of it away. Like, it, it wasn't an idea where you, uh, you know, we, we weren't a family that was whole to say, oh, you, you have to prep because of bad times. It was a, we were just a family that always went like, you, you provide and you think for yourself and you have, you have what you need. We, we had the land, so we grew everything we needed. Even had a couple dairy cows. So we always had the milk. Like it was, it was great. I really wish we still had all that. My cousin still runs the ranch. He still has the beef cattle going. But even now, times are getting tough on that. It's getting so expensive to look after them that the herd seems to be shrinking a little because they got to keep taking them off the auction. So it's, it's just not the same. But shit. I am... Bleh. 
Enough of that BS. I tell you. We need, I don't know, a new musical revolution? Right? Something like that. We need a new musical revolution. It'll cycle back. Bring it back on. Deep fried in a hundred times used oil. Absolutely. We'd collect all the bacon grease in a can and we'd use that too. <laughs> what, Robert? No, no musical revolution? Come on, they'll, they'll bring it back. They'll get rid of all the shit and no, they'll, they'll get rid of all the garbage that they've made. That, that'll be the musical revolution. They'll just get rid of all the garbage that they've currently made and only have the good stuff. <laughs> that is the problem. Anybody can go out there and do it and you don't need a lot of talent. You, you, you don't. I mean, I know so many people that did the whole you know, garage band thing back in high school, even, even, you know, I was in a punk band. I had people in a rock band. I had some buddies that did, you know, put out one album and they did okay. You know, nothing too big, but they made more than enough money that they could kick themselves off on a tour, a self-produced album. But then right away, half the guys wanted the money instead of using it to actually get themselves out there. You know, they, they just couldn't hack it. So that was done. You know, I had another buddy and his only dream was to be able to make enough money to just go from one bar to the next and keep playing and make enough money to keep traveling down the road to the next gig and keep, keep the beer in the cooler and the burgers in the belly, you know. But now everything... Everything is so manufactured. And then that can partially be on us because, you know, when like the synths came out and you had all that synthesizer music in the 80s, like that was bad too. Not as bad as now where everything is completely computer generated. You know, the, the auto tune they have now. I mean, when you see people and you go see them live compared to their albums and they don't even sound the same anymore. It, it's horrible. But I'd rather it's somebody, you know, if they sound a little more gruff and slightly off pitch, I'd rather they be that way on their album too, so they at least sound the same live. People use all this auto-tune and crap, and it just ruins it. <laughs> you, you miss those, do you, Aquarium? The, the analog sense, yeah. I mean, everything is now just so, so electronic. It's bad. Like, you can get every instrument you want now, even on your phone. Oh, jeez, Weird Al, Weird Al. Wasn't he something? Always had permission to do the songs, and sometimes the artist didn't like it in the end. But yeah. Always. He did good. Sometimes. I think sometimes his version was almost better than the original. He did them quite well. You know, like, uh, when he did, um, shit. White and Nerdy is one of my favorites. I mean, you almost can't even tell, right? Um, when Weird Al did that, and he did his version, White and Nerdy, and then you had, all about the Pentiums. You know. He was good. Very nice. You definitely are the music man, eh, Robert? 100%. You got the good vinyl... You got the good sound system, you know, a Yamaha Electric Grand. 
like these are these are great well pike the amish paradise caused him problem because even though he got permission to do it after he first put it out coolio wasn't happy and then he got over it when he realized that uh you know and they told him that if uh weird al wants to do your music you are definitely it well, that would explain it. A recording studio in your house. It's definitely going to explain why. You know, you got a recording studio in your house. Definitely. Oh. That is very, very nice. Recording studio in the house. Never had anything like that. Old studio equipment. There you go. So you never had a recording studio in the house or anything cool like that. We had an actual bar in the house. And I, I'm not talking where you like have a basement and you have a bar. And it was an actual like bar in the house with the dance floor and the stage and it had the TVs all around and the bar tables and the and a tabletop Pac-Man game and this is my one uncle this is what he had in his house he wanted a bar in his house he built an actual bar in his house and kept it fully stocked all the time oh ho Damn. So that is nice. See, Robert's going to make me a little jealous here. Have that going. That's, that's just too damn nice, man. That's going to make me jealous. That's going to make me sit there and be like, envy thy neighbor. I'm not supposed to. I can't go along and be in that bad, can I? Not quite. We'll enjoy it, though. That's a good system. I'm liking that. Just, uh... <laughs> Definitely. Bookworm, welcome. Ah -ha. Sulky all day. Nope. As I say it, when I see that happen around the house, I just put my foot down. I'm like, no, not allowed. No sulking, no whining, no bitching. And then the woman looks at me and says, what are you doing right now? And I said, I am whining and I'm bitching because everybody's sulking. And then we laugh. And then she gets annoyed. And I said, what the hell are you looking at me like that for? She's like, like what? And I said, like, I'm an asshole. And she's like, I have never called you an asshole in my life. But I say out loud anyway. <laughs> Definitely got this weird dynamic. I mean, we get that dim little bicker and things going. And I tell you, the, the daughter will look and she just shakes her head. And she's just like, you two, you have the weirdest dynamic ever. I'm like, it works for us. Always speak the peace, but everything is done in a sarcastic way. If you use sarcasm and poke fun at yourself while you're doing it, nothing ever is an issue. That is the Gen X way. You are not going to make fun of me. I am going to make fun of me. I am going to put myself down. You can't insult me. I insult me. That is how that works. <laughs> Absolutely our way. No if, ends, or buts about it. You can't stop it, you can't start it, but you sure as hell could twist it up and make fun of it when things go sideways, right? The whole... I don't know what the hell.
โอ้ซีดาดาซีรอบเบอร์เก็ตส์อิตบุกวอร์มีดูโอ้ยว้าวอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่ะอ่
I, I did get into the uh, electronics club and ham radio at school. I, I got into that. You know, the idea of being able to radio up to people and talk all over the place and build your own little trackers and little listening devices and stuff like that. Absolutely. I enjoyed all that. Didn't take no wood shop or mechanics at school because, well, that was just too much like being at home every day. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> uh, Robert, that's how they, that's, that's how they get you, right? That's how they get you. You can have those or you can have this. Oh, man, you gave up your ham radio. No, no, no. You got to get another one. You, you got to get another one. I don't have one now. I do, and a, a bunch of my buddies have old CBs that we have kicking around in case we ever need to put them in at some time so we can talk to each other locally. But no ham radio now. Do work on all sorts of things. Well, they're handy to keep around. They're one of the classic shit hit fan items. You know, you keep them. A little bit of power. At least you can keep some communication within close range. Oh, Jay, honestly, how will chat, how will chat GPT affect the future? It's going to make people dumber. That's what it's going to do. It's just another item where people are not going to learn anything. See, there, there's a huge difference between learning something and, and, and retaining the information than it is just asking uh, an AI or something Bring it up for you and show it to you. Uh, Pike, I'd be really worried about that now, considering the fact that the the military has admitted that they have that the one F-16 that is completely piloted and controlled by an AI. Now that they're admitting to it. And then apparently it beat the human pilots five to nothing in combat scenarios you know so and that bothers me because you but i mentioned i mentioned this is when you get uh all these things like you know drones piloted by guys at home but then if you got ai itself running things like f-16s and taking to running bombers and all that stuff people in control running the militaries and the governments are going to be more willing to actually go to war because they're not going to have to explain why young men and women are coming home in body bags after because everything is going to be artificial there's not going to actually be people in the battlefield so then it becomes you know people are more willing to then declare war But it don't matter, don't matter how high tech they go or any of that. No war, no war would ever end without flesh and blood boots on the ground anywhere. So, makes me nervous when they want these things completely operating by AI or run from a distance. You know. Yeah, there are a lot of people that do that. Uh, my daughter's taking a class right now, one extra class, even after graduating, because she wants to go off and continue on into nursing. So she's picking up some ex extra upgrade. And yeah, she sent in a paper 
during an exam that she wrote and they monitor when you're doing the exam, but saying that it got flagged for AI. Because if you, even if it isn't, but if you write anything, even a sentence that is similar, they'll flag it. I see a lot of schools using stuff like that. I don't think the universities are using it because it appears to me that uh, universities are just handing out free grades now. I was reading this thing just yesterday when they were talking about how all the, the universities, especially the Ivy League schools, the average of like the A's and getting into the 3.7 3 and 4.0 grade point average, the average number of students that are in that range has is growing exponentially. You, you know? So... It seems that they just decided that they rather hand out the grade instead of spending two days or a week on the phone with parents complaining or this and that. And it's not something new. It's been going on for years. I mean, it was in... Um, oh, it would have been back in 2005 when I was working for the hotel restaurant chain. And I had to let this uh, young lady go. She was like 21, 22. Anyway, we had to fire her. And, or no, she wasn't the one that was fired. She was actually going somewhere else and she wanted a letter of reference, but she'd only worked with us for a month. And I said, you haven't worked here long enough for me to write one. And, and so I, I can't. And she went home and her parents called me up that night and threatened to sue me if I didn't write a letter a reference letter for her because she'd been there a month and she was an exceptional and she, adult. And I'm just like, you are crazy lady. Boy, I, I know Jay that a lot of them are, but the, the problem is, is, I mean, you get Gen Xers in there, you, you know, us, if everyone's going to complain, we're just going to be like it to hell with you. <laughs> yeah you were actually planning on leaving home tonight you, you you don't have yourself a home gym everybody's got to get out once in a while can't camp out at home all the time right it's, it's one of them things you need to get around, enjoy. They, they are, yeah, they're, they're in, they're hitting their forties. But, and well, people seem to think when they say Gen Z, they think of the ones that are still 15 or 14, right? But those are the youngest and but when you think of the older Gen Zs are like twenty five. Oh, Uber, crappy ass thing. You know, yeah, Robert. I I hate peopling too. <laughs> I have a small circle. That, and that, that's just the way I like it. You know, I have a small circle. 24. Mine's 20 next month. No, so. We'll see. It is always, but yeah, we'll be 28 next year. Yeah. See, Gen Zero. <laughs> I, I've never actually seen it put that way before, but I could. 
should we crush them and let them know that the whole the reason they're called Gen Z and Gen Y and Gen Alpha is only because we stole the term Generation X, which used to be used to define anybody under the age of 25, but as a generation, is we we took it and declared it solely as we are Gen X permanently. So from now on, the rest of the generations are just given letters, Y, Z, Alpha. That would destroy them to find out that the only reason they're Gen Z is because we took something that was used to describe anybody 25 and under and declared it ours and kept it. Because that was the original term defining meaning for uh, Generation X was anybody under 25. Because they were considered not countable yet. Oh. No, not worth it. If you're sitting there and you're going to and you're going to risk getting dinged while driving while suspended or something, don't do it. It is not worth it. No. I I I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't be worth it. Why Why risk it? Besides, that's the type of thing where they sit there and you got that and then you get dinged for that. Next thing you know, you, you know, you're in the can for how long? 40 each way. Is that just how much they opted for where you travel or is it hitting their whole time premium charge now or are they just jacking it up now that they're getting everybody doing it? See, that's always a scam. They tout how cheap these things are when they start them or this company or this app. And it, oh, it's great and it's inexpensive until they get everybody hooked using it. Right? And then, wham, that's when the prices go up all the time. Every time. They, they get you. Once they got you using something and you're pretty much adapted to it, not going to do without it. That's when the price goes up. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, Pike, but it kind of is. I enjoy it. It's kind of like sitting around the kitchen table or the campfire or just sitting in the garage with your buddies having a beer and talking. You know? We, we sit here and we can do whatever. Talk what we want. That's why I put it out there Saturday, no matter what. The Saturday night, it come on is a anything goes, open talk, throw a question, any topic, it'll be quick. You know, the one night we were talking about one thing and somebody said, oh, I don't like that, it's boring. Conversation changed. That's how you get a flow going. Like-minded people but various topics of conversation. You know, Robert, better than your actual lodge meetings. Do they call it a lodge meeting when you go to those? Because uh, I know my, well, it's been my mom's to one, two, three, my mother's fourth husband. He was a mason. He never said where he was going. He always said he was just going to his men's group all the time. Right? That, that was it. He always just said he was going to his men's group. We knew where he was going. He never, never said much. Never talked about it. But they did have the cheapest apartment building in the city where people could rent apartments. And I would tell people that the apartment building was run by the masons and nobody would believe me and i'd be like just look at it because at the very top of the building they still had the top part of the elevator shaft that always extends out like 15 20 feet over the roof to get to the top floor and the penthouse and on all four sides of it right was the compass and the square 
great big like you're talking six feet by eight feet huge you could see it from but nobody ever looked up people thought i was crazy and then when you sat there and applied to rent there the the address to rent was actually sent to the masonic hall i don't know how anybody ever put two and two together like I ran into so many people, even though they had an apartment building there and the hall was obvious, but actually sit there and tell me that it was crazy and believing the BS that Masons exist, that they didn't exist. I'm like, man. Kind of curious. That, that's... That'd be a question about the rules of the of the lodge membership. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't know. Could not tell you on that one, that is for sure. <laughs> the not kicks you mean. That is the thing with being a private organization. <laughs> all all these different lodges, it's it's crazy. But it's essentially most of most of them are just a place to get away from the house and the guys to go have a beer. That's a most of it was. It was an excuse to get out and get away and go and relax. You know, have a beer. The, the head idiot at one time, you say. A past master. So quick question, if you want to answer that, Robert, do you have to be a 33rd degree to be that? Or how does that go? Or is there really 33 degrees? I've heard there's actually only actually three. It's kind of... Kind of odd. Nobody can agree, right? They just no, Pike. Maybe you misunderstood. Maybe he was saying his name was Mason. Oh, okay, Robert. Uh, that's or that goes. All right, that goes all the way back to that. Okay. Yeah, no, Pike. Yeah, you might have been mistaken. He might have said his name was Mason. <laughs> okay. That's how that works. There's always something. There's always a little extra niche, you know, because normally people just don't tell all about it. So people just kind of, everybody likes to fill in the blanks, right? They know a little piece from here and a little piece from here, and they just kind of fill it in and make their own. And that's how all this weird stuff gets out there. And then you get all the twisted conspiracy theories and all the other nonsense about everybody. But I mean... People are always going to believe what people are going to believe, and you're never going to be able to change their minds, no matter what. Like, I, I had sat there one time when I applied for a job, the, a job where you get some access to some very sensitive information. So I had to pass a, a major security check, which took a few weeks for them to do the background check. And I passed. Of course, I passed. But I had some people that have known me for a lot of years and they sat there and they went, you passed the security. How did you pass a security check? Told them, I said, because I said 99% of what everybody thinks about me that knew me is all myth. I just never corrected anybody when they came up with some idiotic story. Which is actually worked in my favor for a while, but. You don't always have to be a certain way. You just, people just have to think you are.
Oh, there, okay, that's right, it's the highest in the Blue Lodge. Aha, that's how that works. Well, that would be okay, I get that. Absolutely. I see how that works now. That makes a lot of sense. You have to get in there and you have to. Oh, my, my idiotic stories are true. It's the idiotic stories that people have told about me that aren't always true. Like I moved away once for three years from my hometown and then, then I moved back. But I never told anybody where I was going or why I was moving. And when I moved back, everybody thought that I was cut back because I was just being released. Every, you know, nobody had heard from me the entire time. They all thought I was away, that I was in jail the entire time, that I got locked up. No. Never told them otherwise. Never tried to convince anybody of shit. Right. I mean, it was the same nonsense growing up with my dad. All right. Half the people thought my dad was the largest drug dealer in the city. And the other half thought he was an undercover cop. They could never, they, they couldn't agree. It was just absolutely weird. You know, they did. They, it, it, it was completely nuts. So people make up their own. People make up their minds about crap they don't know. And, and the only reason that they did that, that they were thought that way, is because before I came around, my dad was a classic beer brawling biker okay when when you see the classic beer brawling booze and dirty greasy low life bikers from the 60s that was him and then i came along and he became a respected citizen and actually joined the police department was there for a couple of years and then turned around and went on into mines and construction so that's probably where it is. Everyone gets it all twisted and everybody, you know, but and nobody. They just took a couple bits from his history and ran with this weird ass story. You know. I mean, he did it one time. We did get a police raid in the house and they took a whole bunch of crap and they, you know, tried to charge him with drug distribution at one time. And when it was all said and done, charges got thrown out, a cop lost his job. You know, it, it was a whole thing. It was, it was great. So I, I'd never, ever in my life, I was 14, and I to see somebody that was so arrogant, the, the cop was so arrogant, he thought he had everything, and he ended up losing his job. And the reason he lost his job is because he kicked the door in before the warrant was signed. It was as simple as that. And it, nothing happened. Everything all just got completely squashed and thrown out. <laughs> You got to wonder, yeah, about the, the cool thing, of the cool or not cool. Oh, man, was all right. My mom was absolutely fucking nuts. It's, it's all, uh, it all varies, right? You never know. Oh.
Yeah. Kick down the door. They they figured they had this big thing and they were going to do a big raid on the old man and uh, they were actually sitting there and the one cop who had a personal grievance against my dad and a couple of his buddies actually jumped the gun and went and kicked down the door and started searching the house and the property before the search warrant was signed. He beat it by like five minutes or something. It was absolutely ridiculous. I got to miss a lot of school back then for that, watching that trial every day. It's pretty boring. But it got settled. Absolutely. Uh oh. Forcing you to sell. Not wanting not wanting you riding it anymore. Or? Was she just saying you're too old to ride or she doesn't like riding on it? Was she ever into the bike? Maybe you had to get her her own bike. Robert, after all this time. Sometimes that can change it. I had a buddy, his wife was the same thing too. Get rid of your bike. And then he bought her one. And that changed that in a hurry. That does happen. The old bones can get a little rough and get a little beaten. Right? Like, uh, my dad didn't ride for years and he wanted to ride again, but he was going to buy himself a big cruiser. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't sit there on a, he, he couldn't ride no low bike or a hardtail no more. He would have wound up in a hospital. <laughs> With bruised kidneys or something. They're hardening up on somebody in decent shape. Right? I mean, you can take a beating. Man. Take a beating. Okay. Speaking of that, taking a beating. I said last week that I was going to tell the story today about when... You know, I went for a ride and I didn't think that I was coming back. All right. So <laughs> I promised I'd tell it. So here it is. Back then I had this buddy and he was a regular. He, he was, he was really sketchy. He was into everything, but he was, he was a buddy of mine. And I mean, we were tight or we loyal. And he knew all sorts of people and he just, he did his thing and I did my thing, but we'd hang out and he was crashing at this apartment that belonged to the girlfriend of this one dude. While she would be away, he would get to hang out and crash there. And I would go and I would hang out there with him too. And it was never a problem or anything. And we end up the one weekend throwing a party throwing a pretty damn good shaker of a party. And what he never told me was who this boyfriend person was, who he wasn't completely up on it either. Um, but let's just say that he was a member of the three patch variety. You know, if you catch my drift and we we're sitting there partying a whole bunch of people are friends of ours, our age and everything. When like a half a dozen of these guys come bursting into the apartment, tossing everybody around, taking the money they had on them, what, whatever else they had, their booze, any drugs they might have had, tossing them out, getting rid of them. It was, you know, 
grabbed my buddy and threw him down and just started telling him that he's, you know, he's a dead man and all the nonsense that's going on. And they're just ransacking everybody. And I'm just sitting there on the couch watching this. And I was, you know, pretty stoned, but I was with it. And they're sitting there and I'm watching this. And then they come up and they tell me to get out. I got to get out too. And I looked at him and said, I never bail on my friends. And all they said was your choice. And they proceeded to lay one of the worst beatings I had ever seen in my life on my buddy. And then they came and he did it to me too. And then they dragged us outside, went down and they had a van there and a couple of them tossed us in the van. We're going for a drive. We're talking just the regular old dirty van, no seats in the back, no nothing, them riding up front. And I'm just like, son of a bitch, you know, beat the hell. I'm in a lot of pain. He's freaking out. And I'm thinking, oh, man, we are, we're done for. This is, this is it. And the passenger is doing something up front and he leans back and he hands me a fucking big joint. And I'm like, damn. And he's like, you're going to need this. So he starts smoking it. And I'm thinking, uh huh. One last smoke. This is this is the end of it. And we go pulling up into a parking lot by a hotel. And then they hand us some paper towel and tell us to clean our faces. And they took us into the restaurant and sat us down to have a meal with us and started to explain the new rules of how things were going to be. And that he could still hang out at that place. But nobody was ever allowed in there ever, ever in there but him. Except now I could be in there. I wasn't allowed before, but then they said, you can be in there too. And they purposely said I was now responsible for anything my idiot friend did. That I was responsible to make sure that he didn't screw up again. And all I could think was, I'm walking out of here. And I'm like, son of a bitch. And when it was done, we got up, they paid, they walked out, they got in the van and they left. And they just left us at this hotel at a restaurant at a town outside the city that we were in having to make our way back. And we, we made our way back and we made our way back to the apartment and it was pretty unnerving. I mean, for the next while, I thought absolutely for sure they were going to snag me up again at one point that it was, it was a done deal. You know, I was pretty sure that was the end of it. And, and after that, I mean, things get rolling in your life and in your world. And at some point you got to make a decision. And I made a decision and the decision in the end I made when I was like 24 is I walked away from everyone and everything I knew and never had contact with any of them again for years in order to separate myself. Cause man, I, I don't think things would have been much longer. You only get one ride like that ever. And the fact that, they got a ride like that and survived. It was, oh man, it was nasty. No, I didn't become a recluse. I entirely moved away. Completely. You know, but it was, it was crazy. The only, the only difference is, is, I've seen some of them same people over the years move back. I'm there, but it was because when, when I left and I cut bait and I cut 100% and never hid where I was going or from anybody, you know, you, you, you can make a break, but it, oh yeah, I, I didn't think I was coming back from that ride. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, uh. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a fun night. I tell you, I, I am not ashamed to admit that I was, I was quite on edge for a 
at least a week after that. It was every time someone walked near me, behind me, on the same sidewalk as me, you know. <laughs> it was crazy. But yeah, he, you have to make a choice. And I, I knew where things were going to go, uh, you know. Because that incident happened, and then I still, you know, lived my life the way it was for a couple of years, and I had to make a choice. And what really topped it off for me to make a choice is I saw them guys fire somebody, you might say, that was in their employ once. And yeah. After, <laughs> after you see somebody that needs, like, half a dozen reconstructive surgeries to their face. You're like, fuck. He, it's, it's time to decide. You walk away. Or you accept that that's going to be you one day. Then I'll walk away. That's crazy. You know, Robert, it's funny you mention that sent you home from school a few days because they didn't want other kids to be us. <laughs> yeah. I had many, many people. Their, their parents, man, I had friends, their parents all the time would be like, you can't hang around with that kid. You can't hang around with him. You can't be near Drac because, oh man, this is a bad influence, bad kid. He's this, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to do that. Well, guess what? Out of everybody I knew, I'm the only one not addicted to drugs. I'm the only one that has not done prison time, right? Like, so who's the bad kid now? <laughs> you know, I've never done time. I've never done that. Nothing like that. No, lots of people that have. Just kind of happens. You run into them. You can usually spot them too. Put them out somewhere. It's something you can you can notice. Born in the birthplace of Freemasonry. I'm working on it. I'm an alcoholic, but I'm working on it. Ah, uh, Jay, some of them do. Some of them do. I'll tell you this. I was living one place in one city and uh, I, I ended up as man. that city was so expensive. You could not live there and not have a roommate. And I met this dude and he was on parole at the time and he had just got out after doing like 17 years. And I got to tell you the most respectful roommate I ever had in my life. From any time from when I was in my teens, early 20s, having a roommate, that time, that guy, he was the absolute, was the most respectful. Never, never crossed the line, didn't touch anything that wasn't yours. If I had to get up early and work that day and he, he didn't, he would not make a sound. He wouldn't even go out in the living room and turn the TV on. He would, he would sit there and he would just go into his room and stay in there and not make any noise and just like play on his phone. So it didn't bother me. Like very respectful. At the same time, there were a couple times he went off about stuff and he kind of wondered because he was clearly, clearly institutionalized because our toilet was plugged all the time because he flushed everything down the damn toilet. But, but you know, what do you do? <laughs> He slowly got past that. I mean, you, you had to allow for these things. But, uh, uh, but he was an all right dude. Never had a problem with him. I always found anybody like that. They were usually very respectful. Completely. Let's see where we are here. Do doom do doom. Well, 
Looks like kind of an impromptu lodge meeting in the chat there happening, huh? Always gets me where people come from, where they go to. Man. Harley, you think, yeah. Is that your, uh, so, um, Jeffrey, is that your personal opinion on that? Or you think that's just a matter of fact that you can see from within, right? Ah. I see. I I could see it. I I could definitely see it. It'd be interesting to see where these things are. You know, in in time. Well, they could, you know, the Gen Zers could find community and belonging if they actually got out and engaged themselves in the world. You're, you're not going to find no community and belonging just burying yourself on the internet. You're going to get caught up in some weird ass twisted cult that's going to warp your mind so bad that you're not even going to know who you are at the end of the day. Oh, speaking of, to all Gen Z's that might come by, let me tell you now I am starting a new organization that you might know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's, that's how you got to do that, you know? I'm going to grow my hair out really long and a beard and I'm going to, you know, start wearing robes and I'm going to spout some really weird nonsense all the time and yeah. I'll get all these Gen Z's to worship me, but it ain't going to do anything. I'm not going to be able to sit there and pander to them to give me half their paychecks all the time because most of them still live at home. So that ain't going to work. The millennials, I can get the millennials in there. You can get them. Absolutely. We'll work on them some. Always thought being a call leader would be fun. Kind of in a way, you would think, right? But that's, oh man, it's a lot of work. I mean, one, you have to like to hear yourself talk. Well, check. I'm, I, I'm there. I can do that. Absolutely. Two, you have to want to be responsible for a whole bunch of other people's decisions. And that is where I fall short. That is where Gen X generally falls short. You think we want to be responsible for a thousand other people's decisions? No. You know, not at all. Well, no, they can't. They can't talk in public. They need to join a group where they can learn to talk in public. You know, they got to they gotta learn to get up in front of a crowd. Give a little presentation or a speech now and then. And class is doing the old man slide. I keep having to put them back. It's time to pop the arms off and put the straps on, I guess. Or pull out the other pair. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like being responsible for my decisions either. But what do you do? You do what you can. You make the odd decision and you go, ah, shit. Why didn't somebody stop me? That's why you get married, so you don't have to be responsible for your decisions anymore. Isn't that the case? Because then they can tell you what your decision is going to be. <laughs> not a bunch of sister wives 
<laughs> you don't want a bunch of sister wives? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't see it. I couldn't do it. One, one, one's enough. I couldn't have two. No, 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 no. I'd go nuts. I, I do all the cooking now. Aha, <laughs> Grippa, welcome. That's what you do. <laughs> if you live close enough to go to the parties, but then you can go home after, yeah, you know, just going to be that outsider that dabbles. Go for the goodies and the free food and then head home. Absolutely. Well, I can see them getting rid of AM radio stations, but what would what would be the purpose of getting rid of AM radio stations? I mean, come on. I'm sure somebody has that there's some sort of conspiracy floating around about that one. There's got to be. Everything has a conspiracy behind it these days, whether it's true or not. But trying to get rid of AM radio? Well, next, they're going to just want to get rid of radio altogether. You know, that, that could be, but you, you never know. They'd get rid of AM radio. They'll get rid of other radio. Next thing they're going to shut down libraries everywhere. Right? Like shit. So watching a thing, uh, recently about over in Australia where if you want to actually withdraw cash out of the bank now you have to give them a reason why that they actually want to know why crazy Well, that could be, yep. Well, but that was the same with um, not just uh, AM radio, but uh, it was the same with uh, taking TV digital. Right, and free up all that. All that spectrum. Right in the thick of it. <laughs> Jay, you are correct. They do. They do. But, but you see, Jay, take this one. Who would have thought that in this day and age, Roseanne Barr would look better than Madonna? And yet, here we are. It's, uh... You know, they have that... I know they're reallocating it for 5G, but 5G is not good. I, I don't like 5G. It doesn't have the range. It's got the power, and it's got a higher bandwidth, and they, they should have been working more, I think, on compression algorithms or something because you got to have more towers for 5g because it doesn't have the range so it's i don't like it i honestly don't think it's really any good not for mass use purpose you, you need more towers 5g doesn't have the same range I mean, they talk about videos and all that, but geez, I don't remember ever having any problem watching movies or videos on, on my old uh, iPhone 3GS, right? Like, no problem. 
my first Android phone never had a problem with uh, any data problems with 3G. So I think they should have worked more on uh, data compression. But I'm not a techie. I, I wouldn't be able to. Uh, I, I wouldn't know where to begin, where to start, or anything. In fact, I could be 100% wrong on the idea, but I'm just not a fan. not for me and yet it's everywhere now you see new towers going up all over the place and yet with all of them there are still dead spots you would think that they would fix the dead spots currently before trying to revamp the system there is no reason to have dead zones in the cellular networks anymore You know, there is no reason. There, there shouldn't be a spot that you go. You should be able to travel every highway, every road, and not have a dead spot anymore. Even if you're going through a mountain highway, there shouldn't be. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to be able to dead spot my own place. You know, jam out my own, you know, however big a property I can get my hands on and jam all cell signals. Yeah, see, and there, there, there shouldn't be, there, there shouldn't be anywhere along a highway where there's a dead spot. I mean, even if you go with a lower end signal in the mean to fill it in, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, the old phones did. Seriously, yeah, they charged you out the ass for data. That is for sure. That's where the dead spots come from. Okay. I mean, I, I get it where they have the the actual quiet zone there because of the what the hell is it that radio telescope but you know but i'm not too worried i i could rightfully do without my cell phone i don't need people getting a hold of me when i'm going to the grocery store you know leave a message on the old answering machine Huh. <laughs> yeah, the charges are a scam. You you would think. You think so? My battery lasts quite well, no matter what. You know, I'm but here's the one thing that bugs you know, all the cell phone talk. Here's the one thing that bugs me with all this technology we have with cell phones and everything today. They still can't do something that my phone used to be able to do over thirty years ago. Okay. 
my original cell phone I had, it wasn't the big clonky brick. It was the first flip phone style where the flip pad didn't do anything but cover the keypad. It was a Motorola V1000. I got it when I was 16. And it had one feature that no phone can do today. And that was in the middle of a call. If your battery died, you could take the battery off the back and you could pop your other battery on and still maintain your phone call. You could actually switch batteries and your call wouldn't disconnect for at least 30 seconds and continue talking. Now, I, I don't know how it is. <laughs> Right away, the drug dealer looking like that. Yeah, and like they don't have that now. Now you can't even take batteries out of phones now because they don't want you being able to power them out at all. And I, I would like to see that again. No. <laughs> Yeah, it is, but I don't like the fact that, uh, you know, I, I don't like the fact that even though my phone is turned off, it's never actually turned off because I've turned my, I've had my phone off, traveled for work and driven like six miles. And when I turn my phone back on, it turns around and now tells me what trip I just did and the stops I made along the way. And that's when my phone was actually turned off because the new phones are never up. You can't pull a battery out and you can't drain the last of the juice in the little capacitor inside that they keep for keeping the clock and the time well correct. I think they did it on purpose. You know, the fact that we all just willy nilly now gladly carry tracking and listening devices on us everywhere we go. There we go. I'm going to Alex Jones it for a while and just go off they're coming for us no. <laughs> you know I, I i don't i don't get it it was the same even with like a windows software for for my computers up until you know up until what was it about a year and a half ago i i used what was known as xp black bunch of guys stripped down windows xp and they were creating the updates to keep it and that tracked nothing so you could actually use your computer and nobody could monitor anything it was great but even that it stopped stopped working I still think it was the single best operating system they created. I don't know why they had to change everything. They really should have just took it and they should have made incremental changes to XP and not done anything to it. I think it was the best operating system that Windows made. No. Why they left DOS? Oh, man. I remember sitting there in computer class in school and writing out programs in DOS. And you'd be sitting there all day doing out your programs. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, Robert. It did kick stupid people off PCs. And and Jay, that's that's a simple fact. You you figure that any technology that they actually tell us we have, or even the advanced stuff they admit to, and then you think about what they don't admit to. You know. Oh. No. Greetings, Fox Link, and I gotta say, you're probably absolutely correct. But it's to the point now you don't own stuff. I mean, you 
like, look, you know, what is it? A Apple doesn't even want it. They want to switch to where they're not even going to sell handsets anymore. They're just going to lease them to you. You know? That, that's going to be crazy because you're not even going to own your phone. You almost don't now. Like, I'll never use use an iPhone because you can't, they won't let you do anything you want to it. You know, they're... All right, Jeffrey, you have yourself a good night. Thanks for stopping by. It was good to see what you had to say. You brought lots. I'd like to see you come by again. Well, Pike, you're right, and it's absolutely... I have a tendency to keep my phone sometimes for five, six, seven years. You know, it, it gets absolutely horrible. <laughs> Jay, did you actually have to look up a photo to do the comparison there before you came back to answer that? Because that, it's a shock to the system when you turn around and you look at that and realize that, yeah, she does. Who, who would have thought? <laughs> you were shocked to see I was right. And wasn't just tossing out a joke there. No, it's, it's absolutely, that's... Oh... Still have an iPhone 8. They will try. Apple has tried so many times to force people to upgrade. It's crazy. And yet, this is the way I see it, okay? They got all the phone, no phones, and everyone releases the new phones. But I'm going to take Apple for an example here and pick on them. Because the only iPhone I ever had was the, the iPhone 3GS. Okay. And it was good, but then the next one I got was an Android, and I never went back. Because I like the fact that I'm allowed to do whatever I want to my phone or mess with the operating system, change it up. You know, I can put whatever apps I want into it. They don't block it. But you take the first iPhone to now, other than... Unless you take the new phones now and compare it to then... Other than size and maybe more cameras and, you know, a few things, they haven't really changed. You look at Apple and Apple hasn't actually put out a new product going on like 20 years. They, they haven't done anything. They haven't really put out a new product or nothing. And yet when they're going to put out another phone, which is almost exactly the same as the previous one, you see the lemmings line up for miles to be the first ones to spend their 2000 or $3,000 on the latest phone, which half of them are probably going to drop in the first month and crack the screen anyway and have to pay another two or 300 to fix. You know, like, even my brother-in-law with his one phone, he dropped it and cracked the screen, took it to a cell phone shop, and they charged him $200 for a new screen for his phone. He, he cracked his screen again like a week later and got mad and said he wasn't paying that. He looked it up, and the actual repair kit for his phone was $20, and they sent all the tools, the screen, and everything required for $20, and he fixed it himself at home. 
Well, mind you, he can still, you know, he can work on things. Got to teach younger people to work on things, how to repair stuff, save themselves some money. Survived falling from an airplane. I mean, I could, I could see it depending how it hit and landed just right and all the facts are right. I mean, but there are skydivers whose shoots never opened at all that have survived impact. It's very rare, but it does happen. I'd have to take a look at that. I have to find that one. See if it had a case on it. Because whatever, if it had a case on it, whatever company made that case is about to go through the roof. If that is an actual real event. That, <laughs> somebody's going to make a lot of money. I mean, Otterbox cases aren't worth crap anymore. They, they... I bought many things where they say the specifically built tough for construction sites. And I know that these things were never, never designed by somebody that actually worked construction sites because the stuff didn't last. Three otter boxes later. Very nice. If you can hold on to your phone for a long time, you do it. I mean, it's, it's mostly for making phone calls. That's what it's for. I mean, I do like the idea with the camera now and the phones because when I'm building and I can, man, I can take constant pictures and, and, and keep engineer updated. They don't have to come down all the time, right? It's, so they, they are handy, but you gotta, you gotta not go too crazy with the new tech. Like I, I don't jump on the bandwagon of the new technology all the time. I mean, my laptop right here is got to be, oh gosh, 2019, 2018, 2018 got it. And there's nothing wrong with it. Works just fine. I barely use it actually. You use the computer for everything else. Laptop just kind of sits here mostly. I only use it now to actually of an image of the channel closer so I can see a proper feed if anything screws up because the other monitors are about 10 feet back from me right now and I can't I can't see them properly I got the big one on the on the wall but they're supposed to be a tool robber but they seem to have become a lifestyle like they're it is not. People just can't get out of their phones. It is horrible. It don't matter where you go. Everybody phone, 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 phone all the time. They, they, they can't get out of it. They can't drop it. They can't leave it alone. They're addicted. And it's scrolling them damn things at TikTok or they got to be on the Instagram all the time and see if somebody liked or something or what the latest picture that some idiot has put on there. I mean, I kind of get the hypocrisy here, considering the fact that, you know, a lot of people, the, you know, I see, uh, believe it or not, you know, the YouTube channel, so people watch. But I've seen something neat because I can see the analytics of everything and what people use to actually watch the videos. And it's over half of everybody that watches anything on my channel watches it on their TV, which really surprised me. I would have figured it would have been more computer, but it's mostly on actual TVs. So that means a lot more Gen Xers than I thought have, uh, actually have smart TVs. Well, yeah, the second largest is, of course, the computer's PC. It's uh, 
it's some on phone and stuff, but I was amazed at how many actually watch on a, on a television. <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I do of me and the, you know, me and the little lady at night will turn on the TV sometimes. Oh. You use your phone to watch. How's that work for the, uh, for typing the chat? I, I've never seen the layout with the chat on the phone. Does it roll up? Uh, is there a little kind of half screen underneath that you open up and that's where it shows it? Oh. <laughs> I'm cast off bathroom. Bathroom is the one place that don't have a TV. I have a TV everywhere else in the house. <laughs> that I didn't know you could watch on the TV and chat on the phone. I I I I do my best to stay off YouTube on my phone. You, you know, I not not at all. I, I, I periodically, when I'm you know in the bathroom, I get sucked into the damn Facebook Reels on my phone, which bugs the shit out of me. Lounge in the garden tub. There you go. Kick back, relax. That actually sounds fairly damn relaxing. Well, as you said, 2017, phone's still going. Don't drop it in the tub. That won't be going anymore. It'd take a lot of rice to fix that one. <laughs> yeah, see, we, yeah, see, that that is a Gen X thing, I think, Robert. That is clearly a Gen X thing, everybody. We tend to stay off the things that we use for work when we're at home. You, you you don't want to unless it's certain things i mean if you're like a carpenter or something you're always working at home anyway because you're for endless under endless permanent renovations in your own house if you're a mechanic of course then you're always working on stuff at home because you're not going to pay somebody else to do it when you can do it for a tenth the cost so i get that but when it comes to other stuff yeah i can see you wanting to stay off the computer when when not at work I mean, that would be like stopping by your house and going, hey, you want to watch these 17 kids today for five hours on your day off? You know? <laughs> I was actually thinking about that the other the, today about building PCs and how building PCs has changed, right? Anybody can kind of basically build a PC these days because you can order all the parts and they're essentially plug and play now. Nobody's building circuit boards anymore or, or stuff like that, right? So you, you sit there and you, and you have all that. So anybody can build one plug and play. It's not like it was in the early days when people were building PCs and you, they weren't plug and, plug and play. You had to build circuit boards and everything. Yeah, exactly. Legos for adults. I mean, everything's there. You, you you buy the case and you order the motherboard and the chip and the like graphics cards and, and whatever else you're going to put in it. And it's done just like that. You know, I remember sitting there in, in school when I was in the electronics club. And uh, one of the first projects we did was making a radio, actually building a radio. And, and so we sat there and you had you had your your copper circuit board and you had mapped out on it where your circuit was going to be. So that part of the copper didn't go away and you mapped it all out with the special pen. And then you dipped it in there and dissolved the rest off and then wiped it clean. And then you had to drill the holes and you had to put all the little 
all the little parts and resistors and pieces in there and solder them in and you got it. And then eventually, you know, after a couple months of classes, you had your own little radio. You know, that was fun. I, I enjoyed doing that. I wasn't so much into the actual computer part, but I, I did like the electronics. Ah, used hospital case and motherboard. Very nice. See, and then 1998. I don't know how many people that would do it anymore. Even though you can order all the parts now, I'm betting you a lot of the younger people wouldn't even bother taking the time to put it together because they'd have to learn how to use a screwdriver. How do you make it turn? You know. Sometimes it just fathoms me. Even at 19, sometimes they open the cupboard and can't find what they're looking for. And you don't look and you refuse to go help and look because you know once they leave, you're going to go and open that cupboard and there it's going to be right there. And that is exactly what happened. And she denies it up and down. I looked, I moved everything. And I said, I opened the cupboard and it was right there. But what do you do? Not much. I'm walking down the hallway, whisper, shut up. Shh. You know, they get uh, uppity, uppity. <laughs> hey, you're probably right, Jay. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, geez, I'm going to have to come up with an unoffensive name for screwdriver. I think I'll, uh, tomorrow I'm going to bring up that chat GP, that chat GPT, and I'm going to mess around with it and, and ask it and see if it can come up with a non-offensive way to say screwdriver, twisty do driver of screws. Yeah, but somebody's going to get offended by screws or driver, uh, you know. Like I, I came up with the idea if someone ever is ever going to ask me, well, you know, the whole nonsense and be like, well, because I, you go and you go and fill out forms and applications now and it actually says what are preferred pronouns that you want. So I came up with my own and it's going to be it. That's going to be my preferred pronoun. It, it, he, it, him, it, lay. It. Why can't I just say it anymore? I don't buy it all that nonsense. Someone gives, gives me with all that nonsense. I'm just like, what's your name? I'm just going to use your name. I don't, I don't care what any other stuff you want to know. Just give me your damn name. Flathead screws, the common. Yeah, they're. The best thing about them, though, is you don't need a screwdriver if you're going to do one. You can use a, you can use a butter knife or a steak knife with a busted off end. You can use a dime. Uh, if it's a wide slot head, you can even get a quarter in there. So you got something good to turn on and you can get that going, right? Bend one of the tongs on a fork and you can use a fork to turn it. Flatheads are good that way. You can use so many things besides a screwdriver to actually turn a flathead. And, th and then you have those. I I like the, uh, the, the tech screws, you know. I, I love them. Because you can't strip them. They get in there and you can just drive them home. I, man, I wish I had it here to have. I got some screws from when we we're building on this log house that are like two feet long from when we we're working on the building a log house. And these things are like, literally, they're two feet. Some of them are even longer. And we had to pound, we had to drive those suckers in. And now it's, oh, they were huge. And those things were like, $10 a piece or something like it was crazy 
but that house was well, what the house came in at uh construction cost came in at one point five was Well, yeah, but then Jay, you're right. It was like a, a rite of passage and you would learn, but it, it wasn't, a, it was like a, a learning. It was just something you learned because it was something you were going to need down the road. You were going to have to do basic maintenance to your own vehicle. You were going to have to be able to do repairs around your house. You know. People talk about everything being too costly to do anything now, but if you if you did more of the things for yourself that you could do instead of paying someone else to do them, you could really reduce your cost, your overall expenses in the world by doing some stuff yourself. Like even just a basic oil change in your in your vehicle. You know, it, if you don't, if you don't, if you go to do it yourself, boy, stutter on that one or what? If you go to do oil changes yourself, the money you spend buying the proper container and stuff like that for catching the oil, sure, it seems expensive the first time, but after about the third time, you're now saving decent money every time you change your own oil. And if you were like what I was the other year when I was driving, I mean, I was having to do an oil change sometimes every 10 days because I was doing so much driving. <laughs> that is absolutely true, Robert. 1,000%. 1,000%. That is absolutely right. But I've, I've had that come up when I go and I go to do something for somebody. And I go to fix something. Even when one that was a pull out, pull out a window and put in a new window. And they're like, oh. And I, I, I charge them and they're like, but it only took you 15 minutes. I'm like, that's because I know what I'm doing. That's why you got me. You could do it, but then you don't know what you're doing. My favorite is when I go to do something and someone says, you mean I could have done that and it wouldn't have cost me anything. And I'm like, well, you're going to need this tool, this tool, this tool, and this tool. And that's going to cost you $1,500. So it's not going to cost you nothing to do it yourself. I have the tools. I have the time, I have the experience. That's why it costs money. When you say that, Robert, it reminds me of that. Um, I don't know if anybody watched it, that South Park episode when they did the whole one recently, the, the, the pander verse and how nobody knew to do anything anymore. And handymen became the richest people around because Nobody did anything for themselves and nobody knew. So they would just charge through the roof for everything. You know, plunge a plug toilet, thousand dollars, right? I mean, that's what happens when you don't know how to do things yourself. <laughs> so that, that's another issue, Robert. I'm the friend with the tools. So I get called for things all the time. And people ask, but I got friends that own electrical companies, plumbing companies. So I also call them for stuff. You know, I'll give them labor for free. I got help out friends labor for free plumber. Cause then we need plumbing work. They come and I only got to pay for parts. <laughs> well, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, then you don't touch it. But, but you got to learn. 
you know, everybody should uh, at least know the basics just for basic maintenance on your car. But then it's getting to the point where you go, you don't even get the same service at a gas station anymore. If you go and you go and get filled up, you used to be able to get actual service where people check stuff for you. That is, a, that is a lot of it, Robert. Absolutely, completely true. Again, it's not necessarily what you know, but who you know. That makes a big, big difference. You know, if you know people, it, it allows certain things to happen. Even, um, I had a buddy, he's, he's not only an electrician, but he teaches it. College. You know, so he he really knows his stuff, knows the code inside and out. He's always having to go and learn. When they go to change anything, he's got to learn it all, all over again. And uh, he's seen people building houses and other companies that have gone in and done the electrical work, and he knows that they're not the best at it. And he's gone and he's been like, I'm going to go through your house and tell you if it's going to pass inspection or not. And he doesn't charge people. He just doesn't want to see anybody's house burn down. He takes pride in his students knowing what they know when they get out of school, that they're ready to actually get out there and really do the work. Then it takes time. I can too. I, I've done it enough. Some of the same with the plumbing. I mean, I, I, I've done it so much and been around it so much. Well, to answer that, Vanny, Vanny Norton, I never went. Well, I had a, I had quite a few friends that did go. I didn't. I didn't go. But I did have a lot of friends to service. I don't think anybody would today. They probably probably do them a lot of good if they did. Now, see, there's one I won't do. Wire cars. You won't catch me near the electrical harness of a car, the wiring harness in a car these days. Because I'll screw it up. I'll fry something. And then I'll end up having to spend twice as much money when I take it into the shop to get it fixed. So I won't do that. But I'll do a lot of the other stuff still. But you won't catch me touching anything to do with the wiring harness on a car. That is a lot of cable. Extra harnesses in your garage as you speak. Really? Yeah, I, you, nah, I'm, I'm too worried about frying something if I mess with the wiring harness. I don't know I don't know enough about the actual the electrical components in a car, especially these days. You take me beyond about uh, 95 and I'm lost. You get pre-95 and even earlier, I'm fine. You know, so I get that way. I mean, I've done a lot of car stereos, right? But but tea didn't exactly stay warm for long. But mind you, it's been a while. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You got that right, Jay. Houses, roads. Now, here's what I'm going to think. When we talked about the building to electrical code, and Jay, when you mentioned the houses, here's a beef I have with the building code for houses, okay? The average new house built now is only expected and only considered and expected to last about 25 years. So the new building code isn't always better. Right. Like you, you get into the, the stick framing and blue framing 
is not as good as previous because you got these other houses and they're wood houses and they're a hundred years, 150 years old. They're, they're built of rough sawn lumber. They last longer and they're better. And yet code says you can't do that anymore. Most places, there are some places that'll still allow you, but for the majority of it, anybody, any, any jurisdiction that just adopts the basic international building code, that that's it. You, you sit there, but then another one happens. And I have this argument lots with building inspectors when I get working and they'll go and look at something and they'll go, that's not code. And I'll go, well, no, it's better than code, but the code book says this. Well, the code book isn't exactly what you have to do. The code book is minimum quality that you have to do to meet code. There's nothing that says you can't go above and beyond code and make things better than the minimum. So if you're ever going to have your own house built and you talk to the contractor or anything like that, just remember if they talk that we build exactly the code, it means they do the bare minimum necessary to make your place okay. You want somebody who goes above and beyond code that's going to make it last much longer, better quality work. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, I'd much rather do timber frame. That, that's a little better, Robert. Do it for the code 20 years ago. You know, it, it's a... Uh, that, that's the way it has to be. You Sometimes you have to go above and beyond. You have to go beyond code. And I had one place where it was... Um, they, they wanted a different foundation and we're going, I was building what was known as a fought frost reef foundation. So they had to go a little deeper because the frost line, but we chose not to. And then what you do is you, it's the way you do the insulation. So no frost can actually get into the ground underneath the footing to lift the place. So you don't have to go below the frost line. And, and I had to have a discussion with that building inspector and he had never heard of a frost free foundation. And I said, it used to be the standard until they changed it. It used to be the go-to way anywhere that you built where the ground was frozen, be it North America, Europe, anywhere. And so I showed him all the information on how it works and what I exactly did. And he turned around and went, well, okay. And he, he ended up okaying it, but I got a lot, I had a building inspector that was willing to actually not just go by the code book 100%. He was willing to look at stuff and go, well, that meets the standard. And it did. The standard is that frost can't get underneath your foundation to lift if you're building somewhere where you have a frost line. And then, of course, you know, I, I got way out of my depth the first time I went out to the West Coast building, and then, man, and now you got all these seismic rules involved. I, I felt like an idiot that was his first day ever on the job. Because that went out and we're doing commercial, and they, they hired me to be the foreman, and it's all this, it was seismic upgrades and repairs, and I'm just like, damn, I am out of my depth here. I don't know anything about the code for building in an earthquake zone. Yeah. You know. I I'm watching you guys, AF and Robert, and you're talking here. And I can see that, and that's because these people that go in these stores, half of them don't know the products they carry or what somebody might come in asking for. They just know what's on the shelf and what it says on the front of the box if, or in the packaging. Too many people are in, get into stuff and get into something and don't learn anything anymore. 
Okay, so Scepter, see, this, so then you understand what I'm talking about then. When first time I went out and all of a sudden, it, it just like, man, I felt like I was starting all over. And, you know, it was, it was brutal. I mean, I know anytime you go somewhere different and it's a different jurisdiction and you know, when you get in the different zones, codes change, but the basic for most of them are the same, but then you get out there and it's absolutely nuts. But it can be, it can, sometimes you get into a, just a big city and they go lunatic with their local codes that they pile on top. You know, I, I miss, and there's not many places that I keep looking everywhere. All the different, uh, the, the, the different states, the different counties, anywhere where I can get a piece of acreage where if I'm building for myself, nobody's going to come out and interfere with me and tell me what code I have to do and not do. And I can find some, but then I can't find the ideal type of property that I'm looking for. But I find some most recent ones were in Colorado where it was the easiest to find. You know. Yeah, I've looked around in there. You know, got to find that right place, that right chunk. You know. I can see Florida being bad. I wouldn't know much about the Florida one, but then you sit there because you get into the whole hurricanes and all that. But I mean, I guess if I was going to be there, I'd be building them the same as for a tornado zone. Like it, it amazes me how many of these buildings get wiped out in tornadoes all the time. And why aren't you, they, they should be timber framing those suckers solid, you know, Make a a superstructure that's made out of stuff that's virtually like one foot by one foot square. That's all completely bolted and anchored together. That's not going to move. Well, when I say perfect, it means when I look at it and go... I can work with that and I can turn it into what I'm looking for. And that's what I mean by perfect. I'm not looking for the idyllic, perfect piece of land that has the right hill in the one corner of the acreage and a brook in the back or its own private lake or nothing like that. To me, the idea of perfect is that I look at it and go, yeah, I can work on that. I can work with that. You know, that's what I do when I see perfect. It's the same when I'm looking at houses to buy and people are sitting there and like, what do you think of this house? And I walk in and I look and I'm like, well, it's a decent house, but expect to put in at least 50,000 in work. Exactly. But I look at it different. I, it's the same thing when I look at a house. If I look at a house with the option to buy, I'm, I'm not worried about some of the things that other people worry about because I, I expect going in to have to do stuff. That there's going to be some sort of renovation in the end. That something's going to get redone. <laughs> you know, that that's the way I see it. It's good to have ability and skills. And still able to learn some new ones. You know. The key factor to our generation, here's one for you. With Gen X, if we don't know how to do something, we still know how to read the manual to learn how to do it. If you can find a manual these days, and a lot of new things don't come with manuals anymore because they don't want people learning how to fix them. But, I mean, first time I ever worked on a car, you know, you had the big old thick manuals that used to come with them. And it would be like, everything from 60 to 65 in that one from GM and you'd be able to do them all. 
you just have to have them. And a key now, if you're working on something you're not sure of and you're taking something apart, that's where your phone becomes a great tool. You take a photo at every single stage so you can remember how you took it apart and how you can put it back together. You gotta use the tool for the right thing. But I am getting eye heavy. I can hear the dog pacing and everyone wants to say goodnight and the dog will not go to sleep until I actually go to her and pet her and say goodnight and all that stuff and then put the dog like it. So that's dog drive me nuts. But, you know, I do like her. Damn dog, cats. Ah, too many pets. Used to have a filing cabinet and bookshelf with all our manuals stacked all over the place. Encyclopedias, old textbooks, math books, chemistry books. Information is good to have. Real information. But, I am going to say good night, everybody, and head out. I would definitely like to stay longer, but it's getting to be that time. Where I need to head away. Well, it's nice to meet you, too. We're here every Saturday. Come on back. Always try to have more conversation every time. It's been great again. I call it another successful night, people. I've had a total of 52 people pop in and out during the whole time. So everybody, have a good night. Enjoy yourselves. Robert, you sleep well too. And as I always say, be safe as best as a Gen X can. Good night, everyone.